Hello and welcome to this quick overview video of TDTK, short for Tower Defense Toolkit. I'm Song, the creator of the toolkit. I'm going to run through the core features and workflow of TDTK just to give you some idea of what it can do and how it all works. So here we have a new project with TDTK installed. These are all the project files. So the first thing you should know is there's a drop down menu which allows you to create a new scene as well as giving you access to all the editors window. So the first thing you probably want to do is create a new scene. This will create a new template working scene. So I'm just going to show it to you. Now you can spawn unit and you can build towers. Everything works here. All right. Now we get to the background how this all works. So here's a bunch of components that control how all the games works. Um, right, they store all the settings you want to do in a single level. For instance, the player life, the resource, the spawn information, the available tower, and so on. And then you have this. Right, this is essentially the arrangement of the the layout of the level. Right, it contains the build position, the path layout. It basically what you seen in the what you seeing in the game view right and you notice there are you know quite a few of them um, each of them can contain a different layout so just to give you an idea of what you can do right we're just gonna focus on a simple one to just to give you an overview so the first thing I, I want to disable this was this is basically the environment and it gives you um, so basically, what this does is it store all the background environment. For example, your terrain, your custom asset, your rocks, you know, stuff like that. So you can disable them. They are entirely optional. All right? This has nothing to do with the core working of, of the framework. This is just purely for visual presentation. That's all. So we're going to ignore that for now. Then we, the first, what that leaves us with a very bare bone scene with nothing special on scene except the path and the platforms. So first we have the platforms. So platforms are just a collider that used to specify where you can build the tower. You can move them, you can rescale them, you can rotate them in a scene, right? And one thing you should know is the scale is it will forms a grid right uh, how big the grid is determined by this grid size here in tower uh, tower manager so right now it's set to one so if i set to five set this to five five it becomes a platform of five by five so five two five by two again you can move them wherever you want or rotate them however you want and then what well, if I change it to 2 and all this will be automatically ref reformatted to fit this 2 here all right let's keep it as 1 so next we have the path path is essentially just a series of empty transform act as the waypoint all assigned here so this path has four waypoint. You can see them here. They are this dot here. So you can move them any way you want. So obviously this changed the layout of the path. So this is how you arrange your path in the 3D space. So as you can see, the demonstrate by the blue line. So if I play now, you see the path will become drastically different. Can I undo that? Okay. Okay, now here comes the interesting bit. Let me just delete this. Now I can assign a path platform as a waypoint. Let's change the scale to. Now, as you can see, this is now become a waypoint. And if I move them, it changed the path as well. But what this does is it force scripts to move through the platform, right? And you can build towers, still can build tower on them. 
and obviously the tower will obstruct the path forcing the path to go another way so this is how you form your basic maze gameplay and then another thing is in path you can also assign a next path as a continuation of the current path let's say if I assign path 2 as the next path of path 1 now you can see there are two joined together by this blue, new blue line here so basically what, what happens is as soon as the creeps follow, finish path 1 it has to carry on to path 2 um, I have to move this as well so when you play it all becomes a very long chain of path now you might also know this you can assign more than one next path that allows you to create a branching path for instance now I have three paths now at this as a new path now you can see there's a branching path here so what happened is the creeps whenever you reach this point it will try to go pick the shortest route to the destination so for instance this may not make much sense here in this case because I have a preset setting here you might have seen this in the screenshot so similar setting so again the environment if I disable it everything still works so they are just optional right I'll, I'll keep this keep them on in this case so the path itself the first one is just two way point so you can see here this two this two dot and then connected to path one then connected to path two and path one and two has been assigned as the next path and what this does is it create a branching intersection so whenever the creep reach this point we choose a sh the shortest route so if I block this or I try to yeah make it longer it will go this way and if I slightly adjust this path again it will go back so this creating uh, this allows you to create some very interesting level design put everything together you can have um, single path multiple path um, with amazing with floating islands with you know yeah and uh, yeah I forgot to mention as well you can have as many platform and as many path as you want in a single level as you have might have already noticed right there's no limit to how many paths you can have or how many platforms you can have and uh, yeah and about the next part of it, there's no limit to how long you can you know elongate the path you can create more path here and then simply carry on oops there you go so you can create multiple branching paths that branch out indefinitely or they all converge back to one single path so it's up to you there are a lot of options to what you can do with the level design so that's that so that concludes how how you do uh, what you need to do in setting up a basic working level and next we move on to things like um, we move on to things that involve all this editor here because obviously there's a limit to what this can do for instance the spawn information is this, it's just too much to be configured in inspector so we have this spawn editor so it's very intuitive you can see immediately so wave 1 spawn these prefabs 5 of them and so on wave 2 wave 3 you can add more and then you can remove any wave you can add more wave right and then you can specify the time the resource gain when you clear the wave yeah and and then there's the endless mode and of course the procedural generation but I believe that's beyond the scope of this overview video this is just to give you a quick glance so I'm not going to go through any of it because it's a lot more complicated to explain so next we have the tower and the creeps themselves okay just gonna move we have the tower and the creeps themselves which can be configured using creeps and tower editor if I open them I have a bunch of example creeps uh, and tower made for the demo obviously so they are here 
end here. So what you do is you create a, a prefabs and then just simply assign them to this editor and it will allow you to edit all this. So you can change their basic behavior, change their type. Each of these tower do obviously do different thing. Uh, there are a bunch of example which you can refer to and you can change the general setting like the shoot object, the aim behavior and the stats, the cost. Yeah, obviously different tower carry different stats because they do different thing and then the same goes to the creep right you have different type of creeps and each of them they have different setting they have the movement setting spawn and destroy flying and then the basic stats all this so it's very intuitive uh, if you're not sure of what uh, a setting is about you can always hover over them that's two tip for almost everything so that's that. And next, um, yeah, I believe that's cover all the basic stuff that needs to get a basic level running. So the rest are extra. Um, what by extra I mean ability and perk system. So obviously you can. These are optional. Ability is very intuitive. Um, it's very obvious, isn't it? What it does. Basically, it's like active ability. So how you do it is. Um, you configure them in ability editor just like you would with the units so you create an item you set the cost set the, how they work set the basic setting and then they'll appear here where you can enable or disable them for the game and it will automatically appear there down here where you can use in the game where the user can use in the game something like this and then there's the perk manager this is a much like the uh, just similar to the ability manager obviously you have the same editor interface but it's more complicated you can do a lot of amazing stuff with this as i say myself so for example something like this so all this i've configured them so that they form a simple tech tree like this if i play right so they have various dependency and when they unlock when which of them how many how how they cause and so on so forth all them can be configured using this so basically you you each item do different thing right like add a new tower you want to modify existing tower you want to gain life you want to change the resource gain rate and when you whenever you you change that it allows you to modify the relevant options so for instance this one is like modify tower you can change all the stats and then you can unlock new tower and so on so and then there's the general setting which allows you to configure how much the perk item costs when it become available and what are the prerequisite, uh, prerequisite perks like for instance upgrade mine will only become available after you purchase unlock mine as shown here mm, what is it yeah here and here yeah so yeah you can use that to do some very interesting thing like construct a full-on very elaborate tech tree much something much more this is this is something relatively simple that I made in relatively short time. So that's that. Um, and with that, I think that basically cover almost everything that I want to cover in this short video. I hope it has been helpful to you. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.